Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today to hear all about Bryce, Zion, Acadia, Great Smoky Mountain National Parks and beyond by train with Amtrak Vacations. Now, before I go ahead and get started with everything, just a couple of quick things I want to mention. One is to download those free handouts on the map. You'll find that in your GoToWebinar panel in the right-hand side of your screen under that handout section. There's three of them in there, so you can just click to download those right there. And that's also where you'll find your questions box. So if you do have any questions throughout this presentation, please feel free to type them into there and I'll try to make sure to leave some time at the end to get to those questions. So with that, I want to go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Jackie Malecki. I will be your webinar host today. And I'm the product manager of North America here at Amtrak Vacation. So really excited to talk to you about some of these great national parks that we have throughout the US. So what will we cover in today's presentation? We're going to talk about our expansion of national parks itineraries and review some of the options you have for your next vacation. I have some exclusive offers for you for joining the presentation today. We're going to talk about routing your vacation right from your hometown. We'll take a look inside the private sleeping accommodations on board Amtrak. We're also going to discuss how Amtrak is changing right now and some of the new things they've put in place due to COVID-19. We'll talk about ways that you can customize your next vacation and your itinerary. So let's get to it. So who are we at Amtrak Vacations? Amtrak Vacations is a part of the Yankee Leisure Group family of brands. We have a few different ones that we operate. Here at Amtrak Vacations, we are the official tour operator for Amtrak. So we manage the Rail Vacations brand and we do not just the train, but also the hotel accommodations in the different cities or national parks that you're visiting, the sightseeing tours and attractions, we'll add the car rentals where needed. We put the whole vacation together for you. We also operate Yankee Holidays, which is land-only packages. So if you are flying or driving to your destination, we can still do the hotel accommodations, the sightseeing tours and all that for you. And we also operate Railbookers, which is our worldwide rail vacation brand. So Anywhere in the world you're looking to take the train, whether it's Europe, Asia, Australia, we can put those packages together for you. Now, I always love showing this map of the Amtrak route system because a lot of people don't realize the extent that Amtrak travels to and all the possibilities that you have for your next vacation. And we do have a copy of this map in the handout section, so you can take a peek at all the different destinations, the different routings from your hometown. There's over 500 Amtrak stations. They're not all listed on this map, but it'll give you a good idea of where the different routes are and where you can hop on board and where it can take you to. So with that, I wanna go ahead and jump right in and start talking about some of the packages that we have. I'll start off talking about our Portland and Acadia National Park getaway. In this package here, you'll take the Down Easter Amtrak train right to Portland, Maine. Nestled between Maine's forest covered mountains and its spectacular rugged coast is the historic and vibrant city of Portland. It's known for its many lighthouses and your harbor cruise that we include for you will take you to see some of the most picturesque ones. You also have free time to stroll the Old Port District with lots of shops. That's where you'll find some of the best local restaurants and some of the freshest seafood. From Portland, you're going to pick up your included car rental and you'll drive north along the coast of Maine to Bar Harbor. Bar Harbor is the town that's serving as the gateway to Acadia National Park because it's located right next to it. Bar Harbor is shimmering with coastal beauty. You'll find yachts and lobster boats all throughout the harbor. And on a clear day, you can actually see the sunlight glistening across the water as you take in some of the surrounding views of the nearby islands that are there. And then from Bar Harbor, you'll drive out to visit Acadia National Park. 
you'll have a full day and more to explore Acadia National Park, which has become one of America's most beloved parks. It's where the North Woods cascade to meet the Atlantic Ocean. It's a treasure on the coast of Maine. It has rocky beaches. You'll find the woodlands there. There's lots of mountain peaks, including Cadillac Mountain, which is actually the highest point on the East Coast. And for those that are looking to see some fall foliage, this is a great option. You will have some of the best foliage with the red and orange, yellow, the different colors of all the trees there throughout Acadia National Park. And even on the drive itself from Portland up to Acadia and to Bar Harbor as you pass through some remote quaint towns there. And that is our Portland and Acadia National Park getaway, where you can discover the best of Maine on this trip here. So again, starts out with two nights in Portland, the bustling seaport town, which is also filled with art galleries, boutique shops, there's some historic sites and museums there. We do include the harbor cruise for you. And we include that car rental. So you do have it for your duration of your stay in Portland. And then you'll take that out to Bar Harbor, your gateway to exploring Acadia National Park. Remember, you can add the rail from any of the Amtrak station to bring you right to Portland, Maine to begin this package here. So you can do that round trip so you don't have to worry about ever flying or dealing with the airports, anything like that. You can take the train right to downtown Portland. One thing I do want to mention is our maximum flexibility offer. You know, we recognize with everything going on right now with COVID-19, there's a lot of uncertainty as far as when would be the best time to travel, when someone's going to feel comfortable traveling, as everyone is in all different stages. We know that. So we have this flexible policy, which basically allows you to book your trip now in up to five days prior to your departure. You can actually change your dates or cancel your trip if needed. So this gives you some peace of mind. So this way you can book now, have something to look forward to. Worst case scenario, the week before you decide, you know what, I just don't feel comfortable. I'd rather push this off a few months or a year. No problem, give us a call. We'll waive any change or cancellation fees and we'll rebook that trip for you at a time that works best. And if you're not sure what the new dates are, you can cancel the trip. We'll issue the future travel credit for you and we'll hold that until you know when you would be able to travel again. And that applies to any bookings made before September 30th. So if you also already have a booking with us, this policy does apply as well. So if you're traveling later on this fall, no need to make a decision right now. Things are changing daily. So wait till you get a little bit closer to your travel date and then you can make a final decision. All right, so let's jump back into some of these great packages we have to the national parks and we'll jump over to the Southwest. On this Grand Canyon Zion National Park and Beyond package, you can actually explore six amazing national parks. So you'll take the Amtrak train to Flagstaff, and that's where you can pick up your car rental. You can make the drive at your leisure to the Grand Canyon. We have you spending two nights there, so lots of time to take in all the beauty of the canyon. Then you'll drive over to Springdale, where you can visit Zion National Park. And then you'll continue on to Bryce Canyon, Capitol Reef National Parks, ending in Moab. Moab's the gateway to Arches and Canyonlands National Parks. So you can take a full day to explore those two gems and all their beauty there. Spend the night in Moab again. And then the next day, make your way back to Flagstaff. You can drop off your car rental and then hop on board the train to relax and head home. Let someone else do the driving for you as you take in the spectacular scenery across the US and back home. So let's break that one down by destination. So again, you'll take the train to Flagstaff. Your first stop is gonna be Grand Canyon National Park, which is arguably one of the world's most beloved attractions. 
Grand Canyon National Park is home to unique combinations of geological colors and shapes carved out over millions of years. The canyon stretches 277 miles long, a mile deep, and up to 18 miles wide. The Grand Canyon never fails to dazzle its visitors. There's plenty to do in Grand Canyon National Park, including taking a hike around the canyon rim or into the canyon itself. You can even take in the breathtaking aerial views of the canyon on a helicopter tour. Definitely keep an eye out for wildlife while you're there, like bighorn sheep, deer, and elk. When you're staying at the Grand Canyon, we have you staying right at the south rim of the canyon. So you're staying at the lodges and the properties inside Grand Canyon National Park. So here you have a map of the historic village, which shows you how close the hotels are to the rim of the property there. So it's a very easy walk to the different overlooks and the different hiking trails and walking pathways all throughout there. After exploring the Grand Canyon, you're gonna make your way over to Springdale. Springdale is a small town just outside of the boundary of Zion National Park. It was actually named one of the top 20 prettiest towns by Forbes Traveler, as Springdale rests right in the shade of Zion's cliffs. So you can actually see in the pictures here, and the featured hotel that we have is Holiday Inn Express. You can see the backdrop right behind it, the cliffs of Zion National Park. It's a beautiful property. It's breakfast inclusive there. So you can have that before your full day of exploring. We do have lots of different hotels that we use, not just in Springdale, but throughout all the destinations that we have. So we can always find the perfect hotel to fit your needs. And then from Springdale, you can explore Zion National Park. So we give you a full day of exploring the park. There's a stunning sandstone canyons of the park. They have the natural hues of pink, red, and tan. The canyon actually stretches to 2,000 feet at its tallest point. And definitely while you're there, you can take a scenic drive through the park for some breathtaking panoramic views of the Kolob Canyons and more. So after Zion, you'll spend the night in Springdale the next day. You're gonna make your way to Moab, but along the way there, you're gonna stop at Bryce Canyon National Park and Capitol Reef National Park. Bryce Canyon National Park is known for its incredible formations of hoodoos. Those are spires of limestone that jut up across the terrain there. You can see them in the picture right here. And while you're there in Bryce Canyon, you can definitely take some time to take a stroll along the rim of the canyon, I definitely recommend taking the scenic drive to Rainbow Point, which has about 13 scenic overlook stops along the way to get there. After exploring those two parks, you're gonna end the day in Moab, which is a small, charming town. It's a fascinating destination because it's actually nestled right between two popular national parks, which is Arches and Canyonlands. So Moab is surrounded by the beautiful sandstone landscapes. So this way you'll spend the night there and then the next day, you can explore these two fascinating national parks, Arches and Canyonlands. Arches National Park is most well known for its impressive collection of natural sandstone arches, rising hundreds of feet above the desert floor there. The park has an 18 mile scenic drive that you can follow, and that'll bring you to numerous hiking trails, easy walking trails and pathways, and some of the best panoramic views. You can also go out and visit Canyonlands National Park, which is a desert landscape of canyons and mesas that were formed over thousands of years and carved by the winding Colorado River. The park is actually divided into four distinct districts. So you have the island in the sky, the needles, the maze, and then the rivers themselves. 
all having very unique scenery, which is what really makes Canyonlands special. And then from there, you'll make the drive back to Flagstaff. That's where you can return your car rental and then hop on board the train and make your way home. And that is our Grand Canyon Zion National Park and Beyond package. So six nights in six amazing national parks, including the Grand Canyon and Utah's Mighty Five, which refers to the five national parks of Utah. Arches, Canyonlands, Zion, Bryce, and Capitol Reef. Now, if you're wondering how do you get to Flagstaff? Which route do you take in order to do that package? It's Amtrak Southwest Chief. That'll take you right to Flagstaff. And along that route, you can travel through some of the prairies, the red rock scenery, through some mountainous landscape. The entirety of the route runs from Chicago to Los Angeles. But both of those endpoints offer even more connections from a lot of the other routes across the US which makes getting to Flagstaff easily accessible. And again, this way you can avoid flying, the airports, things like that. If you're not sure the best route, which train station to start from, definitely give us a call. Our team is here to help you out and we can help guide the best options for you. All of our real vacations that we do are customizable. This means you can start right from your hometown or your local Amtrak station to do any of our packages that we have. You can take the train round trip. We have also seen some will do the train one way, maybe fly back home, kind of do a combination. That is completely up to you. We can take care of whatever works best for you. And when I say customize, I don't just mean adding the train from your hometown, but I also mean customizing the actual package that you have. So we can use Rails to the Grand Canyon. It's one of the packages that we have. It's round trip Los Angeles and it does two nights at the Grand Canyon. Maybe you want to spend some more time. You have a lot of vacation time. You just want to get out and start traveling. You've been stuck at home for way too long. We can do that. We can add extra nights for you. Maybe you want to stay at El Tovar, which is an iconic historic property right along the canyon's rim there. We can do that and it's round trip Los Angeles doesn't include the overnights there, but we can add a Los Angeles getaway and do a couple nights hotel, some sightseeing tours for you, because maybe you've never been to the Los Angeles area, but your train's connecting through there. So again, we can tweak any of the packages that we're talking about today. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a wide range of hotels. We have three, four, five star options. We work with all the major chains throughout the US. We also have a handful of boutique options and national park lodges right inside the national park boundaries. So we certainly have options to fit anyone's budget and comfort level and occasion that they're traveling for. So let's jump back and talk about some more national parks and options that we have. A popular one this year has been Grand Tetons and Yellowstone Rail Journey. On this one here, you can explore two of America's grandest national parks. They'll leave from Chicago and you'll travel through the wide open landscapes of the heartland of America by rail before reaching Salt Lake City. You'll spend the evening there, then the next day, you'll drive up to Jackson Hole, which will be your gateway for exploring Grand Teton National Park. After that, you'll continue driving up to Yellowstone National Park. You have two nights there, lots of time for venturing throughout the park, and then you'll make your way back to Salt Lake City. From there, we can add the train taking you back home, or perhaps you want to fly home. Again, all depends how much time you have for your vacation and what works best for your travel needs. From Chicago, the Amtrak route that you'll be taking is the California Zephyr. It is one of the most scenic routes, especially as you travel through Colorado and the Rocky Mountains, because you're traveling to places that cars don't. As you wind through the mountains, you'll travel through some of the tunnels there. 
This is an overnight journey on the train, so be sure to ask about sleeping accommodations when you call to book this one, because that's where you can have your own private room on the train. You get a comfortable bed at night, and you get your meals included on the train. And I'll talk more about the onboard experience a little bit later in this presentation. Salt Lake City is nestled at the foot of the Wasatch Mountains. You'll arrive in Salt Lake City in the evening, and then the following morning, you can pick up your included car rental and begin the scenic drive to Jackson Hole, your gateway to exploring Grand Teton National Park. Grand Teton National Park is in Northwest Wyoming. It encompasses the entire Teton Mountain Range, including over 300,000 acres of spectacular, pristine wilderness. You'll actually be picked up right from your hotel and brought on a guided tour into the park. It's a half day tour and it takes you to the scenic overlooks throughout it. So you'll have amazing views. The tour guide knows where the wildlife likes to hang out. So you can go see some grazing wildlife there. And then that afternoon, you'll be brought back to your hotel. And then later that afternoon evening, you can make your way to Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone is America's oldest and largest national park. It's a geological treasure and it's a natural wonder. It has lots of geysers throughout it. Actually, it's more than 300, including the most famous, Old Faithful. It's full of hot springs, waterfalls, lakes, canyons, and forests. We do include a scenic tour to all of those hot spots and hidden gems. While you're staying in Yellowstone, you are literally right inside Yellowstone National Park. So surrounded by all of the beauty. And that is our Grand Tetons and Yellowstone Rail Journey. It's seven days, includes your hotel accommodations in Salt Lake City, Jackson Hole to explore Grand Teton National Park and Yellowstone, and guided tours of both Grand Teton and Yellowstone National Parks. So one thing we have been asked a lot is how is Amtrak maintaining a safe environment? What are they doing now that's different? What have they changed because of COVID-19? So I wanna go through a few things they're doing to make sure that train travel is safe for everybody. So first of all, they are requiring facial coverings, both in the train stations, on board the trains, and the throughway buses, as Amtrak does operate a few buses to service even more destinations in some smaller remote areas. They have enhanced their cleaning protocols. So they do have people on the trains and at the stations that are frequently cleaning and sanitizing, wiping everything down. So anything someone can possibly touch is getting sanitized frequently. They have gone cashless and contactless. So with that, the snack car is open. So they do have food and beverages available for purchase there, but that'll all be done by credit card. So they won't be accepting cash just to minimize some of that back and forth and to make sure it's non-contact there. They do have social distancing posters and floor stickers. So we'll certainly find those scattered throughout the train stations. People are waiting in line to check their bags or pick up tickets, ask questions, anything like that. Or even as they're getting ready to board the trains, they will have those floor stickers so people can maintain a safe distance. And the trains are gonna be running at about 50% capacity. They're gonna be maxing it. This way, when you're on the train, you don't have to sit next to anyone that you don't know and isn't part of your travel party. They'll also be able to stagger it so you won't have someone in front of you or behind you. People will be scattered throughout the train car, again, to have some more of that distance. So let's go back and talk about some more of the packages that we have, and we'll talk about a few options on the East Coast and some of the national parks there. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park is actually the number one most visited park in the US, and we offer a handful of ways to visit it. The most popular one that we have is the Atlanta, Nashville, and Great Smoky Mountains trip that you see here. 
It's actually round trip from Atlanta. So you'll start there, you'll pick up the car rental, and you'll take a scenic drive over to Nashville. Definitely recommend doing a stop in Chattanooga along the way. It's set right on the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Absolutely spectacular. But then you'll make your way to Nashville. You have two nights there from Nashville. Head over to Pigeon Forge for two nights. And that's your gateway to exploring Great Smoky Mountains National Park. So you'll have time to venture through there before making your way back to Atlanta. So how do you get to Atlanta? You can take Amtrak's Crescent Route, which brings you right to downtown Atlanta. So definitely let us know where you're traveling from because we can let you know the best route to take and how you can do this package from your hometown. So you'll start your journey exploring Atlanta. There's an abundance of things to do in the city, whether it's exploring the outdoors. So you can take a stroll through Centennial Park. You can visit Auburn Avenue and the homes there, which are actually right across the street from where Martin Luther King Jr. was born. Or you can go and visit the aquarium. From Atlanta, you'll make your way to Nashville, which boasts more live music than anywhere else in the world. From the Grand Old Opry to the local neighborhood clubs, Nashville is overflowing with music of all varieties. You'll hear country, bluegrass, rock, jazz, and blues. Included in your Nashville stay and in your package here is admission to the Country Music Hall of Fame and historic RCA Studio B. But in Nashville, it's more than just music. The city does have vigorous arts, culture, and food scene. So they actually have a Parthenon in Centennial Park, and it's a full-scale replica of the original Parthenon that's in Greece. And you can actually see that the picture on the bottom left is the replica of the Parthenon there. And then from Nashville, you'll make your way out to Pigeon Forge. Pigeon Forge is a mountain town in East Tennessee. It draws visitors all year round, and it's located about 30 minutes from Great Smoky Mountains National Park. So it's certainly the ideal base camp for visiting the park. Great Smoky Mountains National Park got its name from the blue colored mist that's hanging above the area's peaks and valleys. In the park, we'll take you on a guided tour. So you can take in all of the amazing views as you travel through Ware's Valley, along Little River Road, and up the Foothills Parkway. From there, you'll have views of the wildflowers or stunning autumn colors, depending on the season that you're traveling there. There's also cascading waterfalls, lots of wildlife, and more. And that's the Atlanta, Nashville, and Great Smoky Mountains. Six nights hotel accommodations, again, two nights Atlanta, two nights Nashville, and two nights in Pigeon Forge to explore the Great Smoky Mountains. Now, if you want to visit multiple national parks in the east, we have our Shenandoah and Great Smoky Mountains National Parks Round Trip Washington, D.C. package. So you'll start off exploring Washington, D.C., visiting the national monuments there. Then in your included car rental, you'll head to Shenandoah National Park and enjoy a scenic ride along the Skyline Drive, which goes through the park. Then you can spend a night in Roanoke. Then the next day, make your way to Pigeon Forge and the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And then at your leisure, you can make your way back to Washington, D.C. for a final night stay. Washington, D.C. is a big hub for Amtrak, which means multiple routes offer direct trains to bring you right to the city to start this package. So if you're from the Midwest, the Capital Limited and Cardinal Trains can bring you right here. If you're traveling from New Orleans or Atlanta area, you can take the Crescent Train. And if you're located in the Northeast, there's frequent trains running the Northeast Corridor, bringing people from Boston, New York City, Philadelphia. Again, you can do this from any of the stations there. They'll all bring you to Washington, D.C. 
where you can explore all the national monuments there. So you have free time during the day to check it out. Washington DC is a very walkable city. We do include a guided tour for you. It's the Monuments by Moonlight Tour. So you can see them all lit up at night. It's absolutely spectacular when you can do that. It is a guided tour. So you'll learn about the history of DC and the history of a lot of these monuments and memorials. So you'll see the Washington Monument, Lincoln Memorial, Jefferson Memorial, and more. And we also include admission to the International Spy Museum. They recently built a new location. It is open, it is bigger and better than ever before. Tons of different exhibits and interactive exhibits to check out. Then from Washington, DC, you're gonna hop in your car rental and visit Shenandoah National Park. It's located about 75 miles outside of Washington, DC. There's over 200,000 acres of protected land filled with scenic vistas, waterfalls, wildflower fields, and wildlife, including black bears, have been spotted. Shenandoah National Park is best known for the Skyline Drive, and that's a 105-mile road that cuts through the entire park, and it travels right along the mountain ridges, and it's along the Appalachian Trail. So you will be able to follow that, and that's going to offer the best views by far of Shenandoah National Park. And then after that, you're going to spend the evening in Roanoke, which is nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Then the next day, you can continue your journey to Pigeon Forge, where you'll take a guided Jeep tour into Great Smoky Mountains National Park. This tour will take you to all the hidden gems of the park. Let someone else do the driving for you this time. This way you can sit back, relax, and soak in the amazing mountain views. And that is our Shenandoah and Great Smoky Mountains National Parks trip, round trip from Washington, D.C. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit shorter, maybe you're just looking to do Shenandoah National Park in D.C., you have a little less time for your vacation, trying to make a long weekend, here is a great option for you, our Washington, D.C. and Shenandoah National Park getaway. It's three nights in DC, so you'll stay at the same hotel there. We give you lots of, lots of time to explore the nation's capital. We include a guided tour of the monuments at night. You have admission to the International Spy Museum. We have a car rental for you for the duration of your stay there. And this way you can take that out and take the drive to the Blue Ridge Mountains and go out to explore Shenandoah National Park and drive along that famous Skyline Drive there. That's where you're gonna have access to some of the hiking trails, the walking pathways, you'll be able to see the waterfalls throughout there and more. And again, this package can be customized so we can start it from any of the Amtrak stations and bring you right to Washington, DC. So that's just a brief overview of some of the national park packages that we here have here at Amtrak Vacations. Now I wanna talk a little bit about what it's like on board the train and what the Amtrak experience is like. One thing we do always get asked is, how do I pack for a real vacation? How much luggage can I bring? You can bring two free carry-on bags and you can also check two bags free of charge. I always recommend people check the larger bags with everything they're going to need when they're at their hotel and at the destination, and just bring a small carry-on bag for stuff you're going to want on board the train there. Just gives you a little bit more space in your room, less things to worry about. There's a few different types of accommodations. There's coach accommodations. Coach on the train is not like coach on airlines at all. No one's stuck in the middle seat there. There's a lot more leg room. The seats recline back at a 45 degree angle. There's also a leg rest that comes up. So it is very comfortable for daytime travel. And we do have people that are traveling on a tight budget. They may do overnights in coach as well. If you're traveling in coach, you do have access to the lounge car, the snack car where you can purchase uh, food, drinks, anything like that. But keep in mind, you can also bring your own food, drinks, and snacks on board the train there. 
And then you can see right above their heads, that's where all the carry-on suitcases would go and any of your carry-on luggage, you can put it right up there. There is some space underneath the seats too to tuck that in, but I find it's always best to put it above. This way you can really stretch out there in your seat. When people are doing the overnights on the train, I always highly recommend upgrading to one of the sleeping accommodations because this is where you get the full Amtrak experience. You can see a picture of it here. It's two seats that face each other. And then at night, it's bunk beds. So those two seats fold down to be the lower bed. There's an upper bed that comes down. At the end of the train car is where you'll find the bathroom and shower. And that's exclusively for people with the Remet accommodations. Now, it is possible, even if you're traveling on the train during the daytime, if you're not doing an overnight, you still can book the private cabins and the sleeping accommodations here for daytime travel. This way, again, with everything happening, people want to social distance, that's an option too. So you do have your own private room on board the train because while masks are required on the train, if you're in your room and the door's closed, of course you can take your mask off there. And it is very comfortable there too. If you're traveling with friends, another couple, family, anything like that, Definitely let us know because we can actually request to book the remettes across the hall from each other. So this way, really close, you can open up those doors and you can all chat while you're on board the train. You can go to the lounge car as well and hang out. They do have tables there. So you'll see people bringing games, you know, whether it's cards or a board game that's easy to travel with. It's definitely another place to hang out. So you don't have to stay in your remet the whole time you're on the train. Those who choose to do the sleeping accommodation, they do board the train separately from the coach passenger. So you do get priority boarding. Uh, so you don't have to you know, wait in the lines, anything like that. It's a very different experience. You can board right into your sleeper. The other category and the upgrade option is the bedroom. The bedroom is a little bit larger, so you do have a little more space. And the biggest difference is the bedroom has its own private bathroom and shower right in there. I will say the Romet used to be the most popular category. Um, it's you know a great one to use, but with everything with COVID-19, we have seen more people upgrading to the bedroom to get their own private and bathroom, especially if they're doing two nights on the train, if they have a little bit more time. So definitely a personal preference for what people choose, but I can say we are seeing a little bit of a shift and more looking to do the bedrooms for a little bit more space. And again, for the private bathroom and shower right in their room, because that really is the biggest difference. When you're traveling, in the sleeping accommodations, again, you can bring, you know, food, snacks, and alcohol on board. We do get asked that, you know, can you bring beer, wine on board the train? If you do the private cabins, you can. You're on vacation. Bring a bottle of wine, champagne, sit back, relax, have a toast. You can certainly do that. If you are in coach accommodations, you can't bring your own on board the train, but they do sell it in the snack car there. With both those sleepers, the meals are included on the train and they do have the train car attendants who will be coming by and taking your order and delivering the meals right to your room. So they'll have the menu there, lots of different options for people to choose from. They will of course be wearing masks there um, when they take the order and through the duration of the journey on the train. As far as the food on board, again, quite a variety, you know, even if you're vegetarian, anything like that, they do have options to accommodate all meal types. They'll have pasta, chicken, steak, salads. Uh, they even do desserts too, which are really delicious. The cheesecake and tiramisu are probably my favorite ones. So do you just wanna remind you all about the maximum flexibility offer that we have? So, this is if you make a new reservation, if you book with us from now to September 30th, you do have the ability to change your dates or cancel your trip up to five days prior to your departure. So this does give you peace of mind. So if you saw any of the trips today that you are interested in, or maybe it's something I didn't talk about, but you're looking to do an Amtrak vacations trip, 
give us a call. You can book it now and, you know, the week before your trip, if you decide you want to postpone it, you just don't feel comfortable, anything like that, no questions asked, we will rebook that for you. Uh, and again, that does apply to things that have already been booked if you do have a reservation already with us. One question that came up in the earlier session was, does that apply for travel in 2021 as well? And yes, it does. So as long as you book by September 30th, whether you're traveling this year or even if you're planning for you know early 2021 and into the spring, the policy does apply for that too. Because if you're booking far in advance, who knows, your schedule may change, things like that. No worries, you can certainly adjust it. So now I wanna talk about some of the great savings that we have, and we do have an exclusive offer for all of you, just for taking the time and attending today. And that's if you upgrade to a sleeping accommodation on board Amtrak, we'll give you $100 off per booking. And that promo code to use is upgrade100. And we do have some even more special offers. And these are combinable with the offer I just mentioned for the $100 off. So you can combine the two. To check out all of the offers that we have right now, you can visit amtrakvacations.com slash special offers. So we have additional savings for round trip packages. Another one, if you upgrade to a remet or bedroom, so the public discount is $100 off. But as I mentioned, there's also an exclusive one for all of you for 100. So you can actually get $200 off per booking when you upgrade to that remet or bedroom. And then we do have some select savings and some of our other packages as well for you. So again, definitely check out our website to visit all the special offers and the packages that these apply to. There's also some everyday discounts. So children ages two to 12 get 50% off the Amtrak fare. Seniors, anyone 65 or older, you get a 10% discount and active military and their families also receive a discount. Again, today, just talked about some of the national parks that we have. We have even more national parks available on AmtrakVacations.com and tons more destinations. So please check us out, click on the destinations tab there, and you can see all the possibilities for your next rail vacation. Also wanna mention some of the upcoming webinars that we have, if you enjoyed today's presentation. We do have some more next week. I would do them every Tuesday and Wednesday, always different topics. We'll talk about what's trending, what's new, what's happening. So next week is seven things you didn't know about overnight rail vacations. August 18th and 19th is traveling coast to coast by train, what you need to know. And don't forget, if you haven't clicked to download those handouts already, please go ahead and do so. There are three right there, and it does have that map, which I know everyone always calls and emails us to get a copy of that map and see all the different routes and destinations. So click right on there and you can download that. Now, before I open it up to questions, there is one that I wanna ask all of you. And that is, what destinations are you interested in and when? I just always love asking this question and hearing where people are thinking to travel, what your bucket list destination is. Uh, even if it's not something that I talked about today, please feel free to type it in. We'd love to see where you're all looking to travel when we can finally get out of our house because I know I have been stuck here way too long and I am certainly ready for my next vacation. Let's see, we have Caitlin that's interested in the Grand Canyon in Zion. So awesome, definitely a popular one. I only talked about really one of the packages that we have through there, but we have even more depending how much time you have for your vacation, you know, how many parks you're looking to travel. We certainly have some that are even more in depth exploring the national parks of the Southwest area. We have Nick that's interested in Glacier National Park 2021. That's a great one. I did not talk about Glacier today, uh, but the train will actually take you right to East Glacier. You can hop off the train and walk right to the Glacier Park Lodge. So that's a fabulous destination to visit. 
We have Jermaine, who's looking at New England states next fall, 2021. So probably looking to see some of the beautiful fall foliage. I uh, did talk about, yeah, our Portland and Acadia National Park, but we can also add a little stay in Boston, take you out to Western Mass. There's some great fall foliage tours uh, that go out to that area or to the Cape to visit Cape Cod. We have Susan looking at Boston or Philadelphia, uh, two great ones. Let's see, we have LaTanya. Uh, can we, oh, it looks like a question. Can we shorten the Grand Canyon Zion tour? I've been to Grand Canyon three times and really would rather skip it and head to and head to the other four days. So yeah, LaTanya, we certainly can. If you're looking to do more of Utah's Mighty Five, so that's Zion, Bryce, Capitol Reef, Arches, Canyonlands, we certainly have packages that do that. Uh, for that one, I would probably recommend taking the train to Grand Junction. It's a different route, and that's going to bring you much closer to Arches Canyonlands. So we have people that will start that way, do Moab, then do uh, Bryce, Capitol Reef, Springdale for Zion, and then head back up to Grand Junction. So especially if you've already been to the Grand Canyon, that'll cut off a significant amount of driving. So taking the train to Grand Junction would be my suggestion. And we do have options for that too. Uh, a few different ones, whether you're looking at 2020 or 2021. Um, so it looks like I won't go through everyone's comments and where they're looking to go. We have a lot of people joining us today. So great turnout. Thank you so much everyone for doing that. I do want to go ahead and open it up to questions that we have. So I do see a handful that have already come in uh, during this presentation. It looks like we only have a little bit of time left. So I will do my best to get to as many questions as I can. But if I don't get a chance to get to yours, please give us a call. Our office is open. Our team is standing by. They can answer anything you have. Uh, so at this time, let's open it up and feel free to type in your questions right into your questions box there. We have one from Michael. We live in Tallahassee, so we'll have to drive to an Amtrak station. Is there secure parking for personal vehicles while on an Amtrak trip? Yes, so most of the stations you all have parking available there. Uh, definitely give us a call depending where you're looking to go. It may be a few different routes or there may be a few different stations where you can pick it up from and we can definitely find one that's you know shortest drive best route and certainly we can make sure it has parking available for you so you can leave your vehicle there let's see lots of great questions just filtering through the ones about the destinations so we have one from uh, Michael on the system map. There's a gray dash line between Jacksonville, Florida and New Orleans. What does that line represent? So there is no train that runs from Jacksonville to New Orleans. There used to be a train there, but actually parts of the track got wiped out uh, years ago during Hurricane Katrina. And unfortunately, there just hasn't been uh, the funding. They haven't been able to rebuild kind of some of those tracks there. So that line was representing, you know, what was there and the possibility of maybe bringing that route back one day, which would be a great option. We really hope that can come back. So this way, those of you in Florida can head straight west instead of having to go north to kind of go southwest again. We have a question from Jay Welch. Is transfer from an airport to the Amtrak station fairly easy in Portland or Seattle? So yes, it is. It is fairly easy. You know, a few different options that you have if you are flying in to start your trip. Uh, there's, you know, there's always Uber, Lyft that can do it, a taxi. Uh, I know some of them, I think Seattle's one that has the train from the airport that will go to downtown areas. So it's kind of a, a mix of different options that you have there, but yes, lots of different options to get from the airport to the train stations and it is fairly easy to get to. And some of the destinations we can also offer transfers if you would like to have that preset for you. But we find most people will just do, you know, Uber, Lyft or a taxi once they get to the airport. 
Question from Susan, when changing trains, does the luggage get transferred or do we transfer it? So yeah, if you check your bags there, the luggage does get transferred through, so you don't have to worry about it at all. So that's also why I always say, you know, check the larger bags. So this way when you are moving through the different train stations, you know, if you have a little bit of a layover in between, you don't have to worry about your larger bags, anything like that. Amtrak will transfer those to you. And kind of when you get to your final destination, there'll be signs showing exactly where the checked luggage will come out. And it's in that case, it's usually similar to kind of the airport experience where they'll have the conveyor belt and you'll have the luggages coming out. So it's very easy, convenient to check the luggage there. I do it every time I do too. And I just bring a small backpack on board the train with you know, stuff I need for the overnight toiletries. I always bring a deck of cards because uh, I feel like that's fun. Uh, you know, it's really great to be able to spend time with your fellow travelers on the train too. So that's why I always say to, to bring games, things like that. But yes, to answer your question, the luggage does get transferred over. We have a question from Michael. Destinations, we're looking for sightseeing opportunities, not only at end of a trip, but during the travel to the trip. So yeah, definitely give us a call on this one here. Let us know where you're thinking of traveling to, because if it's from your hometown, you know, let's just say hypothetically you're in the West Coast and you're trying to do an East Coast package, we can certainly make stops along the way if you'd like, you know, along the routes that you're taking to get there. This way you can do some more sightseeing, add some more stops, do some more tours, visit some of the attractions in some of the major cities that you're traveling to. So yeah, we can certainly take care of that for you. So we have Jay Welch saying, looking at coast to coast travel, but we have to fly somewhere on the West Coast to begin the trip. So yeah, we can definitely help coordinate that. Um, you know, that's why I said we see a lot of people that are sometimes training the whole time. Sometimes they'll fly to the starting point, train city to city and kind of make their way back home by the train. So lots of different options that you have there. So looks like that's all we have time for, for questions today. But I do want to say thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time joining me today. Hope you all enjoyed today's presentation and learned a lot about what it's like to travel on board Amtrak and to visit some of the U.S. national parks. Take care.